Good morning. Welcome and happy Easter. Today we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord who died for our sins, our procession. Jesus Christ is risen today. Please rise.
O oh God, who on this day, through your only begotten Son, have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity, grant, we pray, that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may, through the renewal brought by your Spirit, rise up in the light of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. I want to invite our young children forward for a blessing as they make this pilgrimage with their catechists to learn more about them. The risen Christ. Don't be shy. <laughs> Maybe some of the can't be an extra. Okay, well, now we gotta wait till they go. Yeah, come on up. Okay. Lord God, we call your blessing down upon these your little ones whom we love as they journey with their catechism to deepen in their love for your son and their knowledge of you, all through Christ, our risen Lord. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and say, You know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those of by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible, not to all people, but to us. The witnesses chosen by God and man, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him, all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. Word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if then you are raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not what is on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ your life appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. The word of the Lord. wants to say yes 
Likewise, when Paul wrote his letter to the Colossians, it was 30 years after he had encountered the risen Christ. He, he had a lot of time to pray and reflect, and so he, he sees this beautiful, uh, a deeper understanding of our death in Christ means life in Christ. We're, our life is hidden with Christ in God. So our whole life, our whole life is Christ in God. And when we hear it proclaimed, we say, Amen, and then Alleluia, over and over again. Because with every ounce of our being, our mind, our heart, our body, our spirit, our soul, we want it to be true. We want it to be true. Most days, though, we're like Mary Magdalene and Peter and John, the disciple whom Jesus loved, on that first Easter morning. It was still dark. Does that mean it was 4.30 in the morning? Maybe. It might mean that the grief of Good Friday is so, so much filling Mary's heart that she can't see anything. So of course when she encounters the empty tomb, the first thought in her mind isn't going to be, oh yeah, he preached about how he would have to be raised on the third day. No. Her first thought is, where have they taken him? I wanted one more opportunity to, to see him, even in death. And they've stolen that away from her. When she runs to her friends, they follow to the tomb. What do they see? Now, Peter stays, uh, basically asking out loud the question, what could this mean? While John waits, and then when he enters, he saw and believed. And don't we want to, you kind of want to hear the rest of the story, right? Well, we got to wait. We're going to hear the, the scenes of resurrection life unfold over these next couple of weeks especially, but all through Easter season. And each time we'll be left, oh wow, if, if I had that opportunity. But right now, we're, we're asking, what does it mean that he had to rise from the dead? So we could be like Mary Magdalene, just grief-stricken, assuming that they stole the body. What, what else could it mean? We could be like Peter, wrestling, like, oh, could this be? Could it, could it possibly be? Or maybe we're like John, and we step all the way in, and we see evidence of resurrection life. But even then, even then, and honestly, never, if every ounce of our being is longing to give witness to resurrection life, it's only hope that will bring it. And this hope is real. Not because of the stories, those help. Not because of the witnesses, those help. Not because of the miracles, those help. The source of our hope is the presence of the risen Christ in us. The longing comes from the risen Christ already dwelling in our hearts. And we long to believe it. So when we say amen, when we say alleluia, the actual testimony brings it fully present, right? And yet we know 
that our evidence, our evidence is not rock solid, right? That might be a pun because the stone's been rolled away, the rock provides water, so no rock is solid, right? So when we, when we want to give witness to resurrection life in this world, we're going to bump into people who are like, well, prove it, prove it, prove it. Well, our only proof is our love for one another. We see that, we we'll see that in the Acts of the Apostles. See how they love one another. If someone asks for proof, what will we do? Well, we'll lay down our lives for our friends. Because we know, we know that our love is more powerful than death. We know that death and sin have been conquered once and for all. He is risen, as he said. We know it. We trust him. Again, with every ounce of our being. And if there's any part of us that is hesitant, the first decision we have to make today is where will we have Easter dinner? Now, this is a simple thing, but you know it's not so simple. So my parents are right here. True confession, right? <laughs> I haven't seen them much since they uh, did their winter away. Um, and I was looking forward to seeing them on Easter. And what do you know? We're having a gathering with our cousin who's hosting. So, I don't know if it's like this for you, but this happens to me a lot because even though I want to lean in and say yes to resurrection life, my first move is usually to run away and just not deal with it. Right? I, I don't want to look into that empty tomb. But then we end up stuck, right? So my first move is usually to run away. So will I run into Resurrection Life and greet my cousin and all of her family and the new grandbaby? And the answer is yes, because my folks are here and they'll brag me. <laughs> <laughs> and you know this, once I'm there, I'm going to thank God for bringing me. I'm going to say, how could I have ever doubted? How could I have ever hesitated to be here? Look at all of this life and love and sharing and witness and so much faith in the risen Christ, fully present. How could I ever imagine missing that? Because falling asleep on my couch watching college basketball <laughs> is is not going to bring me closer to the risen Christ. But you know what? With almost every ounce of my being, that's what I want to do. Partly because I gave up television for Lent. I have not, I have not seen a college basketball game since before Christmas. I mean, but that's not resurrection. I mean, it's, it's, it's fun, but it's not resurrection life. So, but I will watch the championship game on Mandalay, I promise. Maybe, maybe with my folks. Maybe with my cousin, too. But today, today I'm going to step more deeply into the mystery, more deeply into the empty tomb. I'm going to, I'm going to look for resurrection life. Because the question will be, what did John see? What did he believe? He saw... Enough for him. Enough for him. He saw evidence of resurrection life. And he believed that Jesus indeed is risen, as he said. In place of the creed today, 
place of the creed today. We're gathered here at the baptismal font where Kevin and Marshall were baptized last night. And we are going to renew our own baptismal promises and remember our own baptism. Please stay. 